Hi, Brian Whiten's filling in for Buck Lavasser. Well, in many places, the ice fishing hasn't been very good lately. Join us as we try to find some walleyes on Michigan's largest inland lake. So we're running uh, three, four inch suckers here. I got a number eight treble. We run some bigger suckers. Sometimes we'll throw in a number six, but uh, number eight there right above the dorsal. We'll also talk with the inventor of the Marquette backcountry ski. So really what it is, is it's part ski and it's part snowshoe. Um, it's a snowshoe that keeps you up over the snow and allows, allows you to climb. And then it's a ski because it keeps you up over the snow but allows you to ski down. And something new on the show, the Discovering Tip of the Week. We'll check out a neat way to keep the slush out of your ice hole. All that and more tonight on Upper Michigan's very own Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. Black Bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure, the only way I measure. Feelings that I have for this fine land There is so much to discover When you're a long-time lover Of northern Michigan Gogebic, Michigan's largest inland lake at 13,380 acres, lies at the western end of the Upper Peninsula. It's home to a variety of fish species including smallmouth bass, pike, jumbo perch, whitefish, and of course walleyes. It lays claim to more state angler awards than any other lake in the Upper Peninsula. And there you have it. Sounds like a can't miss to me. So I traveled to Lake Gogebic where I caught up with a couple of friends who made the drive from Marquette a couple days earlier they'd been having pretty good luck with the walleyes the two days prior to my arrival. So I was in high hopes that their luck would hold out and now be our luck, instead of the just my luck that I usually experience. We were on the ice before the sun and getting ready for the morning walleye bite. With any luck, of course. So we're setting up here. We just got, just got on the lake here about uh, 20 minutes ago. We're fishing on Gogebic. Um, we're up kind of towards the head of the lake here near Berglund Bay. Um, we're actually not quite in Berglund Bay, but we're up in the, the, the head of the bay here. Um, fishing weed beds, uh, pretty much the entire, most of Berglund Bay and, um, and uh, the head of the lake here is, is fairly shallow. So we're just targeting uh, those 8 to 10 foot weed beds and just, and just fishing the edges of them right here. Um, it drops off to about uh, 14 to 15 foot behind us here. And um, we've got about 8 to 10 foot of a water up on the weed bed here and we're fishing just right along the break here. Um, the, the whole lake's got weeds like this so you can really fish this this pattern pretty much anywhere on the lake. Just use your electronics and uh, if you got a GPS with the with the lake maps in it that, that really helps cut down your uh, um, your search time but you just find those weed beds kind of punch a few holes and find find where the edge is and then and that's where you set up and um, that same pattern works in a lot of different places out here so it's a, a real easy real easy way to set up and fish and um, we're gonna be running mostly tip-ups today, but uh, we catch plenty of fish jigging too, but the tip-ups are nice because you kind of cover a little more water and um, Those fish that are moving up under these weeds seem to be uh, really keying in on those bigger baits too So it seems to work really well right, We got set up right now We just we just punched about eight or ten holes out here on this this weed break our first couple tip-ups We put in the water were in about uh, 10 to 11 foot of water and these 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 holes that are closer to the uh, the weed bed here are in about um, eight and a half to nine, so we're right, right on that edge, and that, that seems to be the real important thing with these walleyes is getting, you know, you don't want to be right on top of the weeds, you just want to be right on that edge, and that's where those a lot of those those fish will cruise. So I'm thinking we're going to get a lot of flags here, um, get these tip ups set up, and, and see what happens here. But this hole right here is at about about nine, so it's right in the edge of the weeds, and we're running uh we're running ten pound fluoro for our leaders here with a uh, uh, we got number six and number eight troubles just depending on what size sucker we want to run and. Um, Running about a two-foot leader, 
It's a little walleye sucker there, just enough weight to keep it down, but we're in pretty shallow water here, so you don't need a whole lot to, to really get it down. So Casey and I both have flashers here, and we, we use these to set our tip-ups pretty much exclusively too. Um, it's kind of nice. You can see what's on the bottom while you're setting them, so you don't go and drop your tip-up or set your sucker in weeds or something and not realize it or tangle up your, uh, your rig while you're dropping it down. It just makes things a lot easier. And these tip-ups we're only putting about, you know, two foot off bottom, so they're, they're not that far down there. Um, this shallow water, those, those fish don't have a hard time finding these, these baits, really. We've got, uh, we've got our sinker there at about the seven mark. We've got our bait there at about the eight, and we're at about nine and a half foot of water, so it's about a foot and a half off bottom there. Drop her down and set her about a foot and a half, two foot off bottom, and that's pretty much all there is to it. <laughs> of these fish here it's really you don't really know if it's going to be a a dink or a nice fish usually those bigger fish will be moving a little bit when you come up to the tip up so i guess i'd be suspect this is probably a smaller fish but we pull a lot of them too over there you know those fish are just sitting there for whatever reason not not running with the bait so I like to let them sit with it a little bit longer but when we've got this many tip ups out I'm a, I, I bet we're gonna probably be getting some more flags here seeing as this is the first one of the day might as well just get it up and there's a small walleye on there, maybe. He just came off at the hole. <laughs> I lifted him up and just didn't set the hook into him because I could tell he was small. Good one. And those flags were about uh, 30 seconds apart, so broke the ice. First blood. Nice. Not a lot of bad start. No. Real small walleye. <laughs> Little walleye for a uh, for the sucker he was eating there. <laughs> right underneath the sucker right now, yeah. Cool. Be a pike there. I hope Ooh. not. Sure. I was off one when I touched that. Because I think once again, I think we're off that main break right now. I think we're just a little bit although we were around that waypoint. We are set up right where we were. So yeah. There's really no doubt in that. Yeah. We've been uh, set up here for about 30 minutes, um, popping some flags. We're getting some fish, a lot of smaller fish right now, but it seems like we're getting some a lot more of the fish kind of right up on the break. So we're going to probably pop a few of our tip-ups, make a few more holes, and, and, and push up towards the weeds a bit more. And I'll we'll see if maybe uh, get a little more action up there, maybe some bigger fish. We're, uh, we're getting some activity, but not, not a lot of big fish yet. So see what happens here we get a little bit further into the morning but
a little bit bigger fish down there maybe. There's my walleye. And a little guy on a, on a sucker there. Hopefully some of those bigger walleyes show up here pretty soon. I'm sure they're around. Don't miss the Wood Tick Music Festival in Hermansville, Michigan. Four days of great bluegrass, country, folk, blues, and rock and roll. Over 25 bands, fun for the entire family. Carry-ins welcome kids 12 and under free. Buy your tickets and campsites and find out everything you need to know online at woodtickfestival.com. That's woodtickfestival.com. The Wood Tick Music Festival in Hermansville, Michigan. Time for the discovering tip of the week. Well, if you do a lot of fishing on the ice and you get tired of going out and scraping all the slush out of your hole all the time, you can always make a box like this. You work really slick. Made out of plywood, got a piano hinge on the back, open it up, got a soup can in there with holes drilled in it so you can put charcoal in there. Put three pieces of charcoal in there and it'll last you a good four hours. You got a diffuser on the top here above the, the charcoal so you don't burn the box up. That keeps the hole from icing up. Put the box down, you bank it up with snow to help keep the heat in. Then you got the flag, got a light on it. You, know, you just look around at some garage sales and you, you'll find some of the old bait casting reels. You got a weight on here so you can adjust like if, you, if you're fishing for northern you can slide it back. So if you got a big minnow on there it won't keep tri tripping it. And then if you're Maybe fishing with small minnows for crappies, you slide it up and it trips a lot easier. You take a plastic washer and you just hook it on the line and it comes off easy so you can set the depth real easy. And when you get a fish on, you take this off of here and that gets set right out of the way so you can pull the fish up and you, you won't drop it in the hole. And then when you're done fishing for the day, this comes right off of here, fits on there. And I've got a spring that I just hook over the top of it holds it together. Something really handy to get your charcoal going is a, a can like this, all perforated, put a handle on so you don't burn yourself, put the charcoal in, put the charcoal lighter on it, put a match to it, let it sit for about 15 minutes and it's ready to go. You know when the charcoal is hot you can use those to put it in your can. So we're running uh, three four inch suckers here. I got a number eight trouble. Um, if we, run, we run some bigger suckers, sometimes I'll throw in a number six, but uh, number eight there right above the dorsal, about uh, 20 inch, 24 inch leader there. And one thing we do with our tip ups too, I don't know, a lot of guys will, uh, will pinch on split shot, but uh, we actually use a swivel there and run a sliding weight uh, right up above the swivel. And the nice thing with that is uh, after a fish trips, that weight will drop to bottom and uh, the fish can pull the line through without feeling any resistance, which Seems like you get a lot less missed flags when you're running that. Um, especially if those fish are real finicky, they don't feel that uh, that tension on their mouth when they take the bait and miss a lot less flags that way. Yeah, it seems to really really make a big difference, you know, in an area like this, um, when there's not a lot of stuff really on bottom, um, to hang up on it's not a big deal, but uh, I really noticed it makes a big difference on uh, places like uh, Beta Knock, where you got zebra mussels on the bottom and uh, you got uh, things to hang up on, you know, if you're in an area with a lot of weeds or any kind of obstruction on the bottom, it just, you know, allows that, uh, that line to, to flow freely without hanging up on anything, so it seems, uh, seems to help quite a bit. Goodness. Big fish just don't uh, aren't showing up today for whatever reason. The better fish. Ah. Oh. 
pike. Dang. Hope that was gonna be the first keeper walleye of the morning there. fish. Yeah. Hit that ref where we reset that tip up. We're sitting right here watching it. <laughs> Came up on the graph and hit it. As far as the fishing goes, well, just my luck. That was it for the day. But we were hanging out on the ice on Lake Gogebeck in the great outdoors, watching some tip-ups and telling stories all day. And that's something I try to never take for granted. So in the end, I guess it was a pretty lucky day after all. And now, something new on the show. The UP Outdoor Calendar. Each week, we'll take a look at what's happening in the outdoors around the UP. The DNR will host a series of public meetings to provide information to the public and answer questions regarding wolf management and the possibility of a future wolf hunting season in the Upper Peninsula. The meetings take place tomorrow, March 12th at Gogebic Community College in Ironwood, and Wednesday, March 13th at Northern Michigan University in Marquette. And the Big Bay Sportsman's Club wrapped up their predator hunt on Sunday, March 3rd with 37 coyotes, 4 bobcat, and 4 fox. If there's something outdoor-related happening in your area that you'd like folks to know about, let us know by visiting us at realoutdoorsup.com. Snowshoes and skis each have their place when it comes to trekking into the snowy UP wilderness. Combine the two, add in a good helping of UP ingenuity, and you end up with the Marquette Backcountry Ski. I invented the Market Backcountry Skis because I wanted a real simple, durable product that would allow me to enjoy the UP winters. We get all this great snow, we have all this great terrain to explore, and there really wasn't something on the market that would let me kind of glide and shuffle up something and then ski down. So I go up and I go down. Uh, I don't have to change skins like on a really fancy ski. Uh, and I don't have that frustration when you're snowshoeing and you get to the top of a beautiful vista and then you have to walk down on the Marquette Backcountry skis when you're on the top after you've enjoyed everything you're looking at. You get to ski down and pick some great fun lines. So they're just a fun, inexpensive, durable way to get out in the UP and enjoy our wilderness. Really what it is, is it's part ski and it's part snowshoe. Um, it's a snowshoe that keeps you up over the snow and allows, allows you to climb. And then it's a ski because it keeps you up over the snow but allows you to ski down. So really it's just a, it's just a hybrid between a ski and a snowshoe. And um, it's a little easier sometimes uh, operating in really thick brush and uh, going through tag alders and things like that because a ski doesn't get hooked up on the branches. And then uh, it's a little bit nicer than a ski because you have all of this flotation but you can still climb up and get to the top of the vistas. Essentially, you can take someone who's never skied before and put them on these skis and with very little instruction, about as much instruction as you would give to someone who gets on a pair of snowshoes, and they can be successful at it. They don't uh, take off on you and make you feel unbalanced and unstable. And on the other side of the spectrum, we have serious hardcore skiers that are climbing up real mountains and skiing down on these things. So even though it's one size fits all, it actually really spans the abilities of all sorts of different walks of life. One of the user groups is actually foresters and timber cruisers who are starting to use the ski. Because it takes less energy, the time it takes to be out cruising the woods is a little bit uh, less. And so you can actually cruise a 40 much faster on the Marquette backcountry skis than you can in some instances on a snowshoe. Um, the other use is that I've got guys running uh, their hunting lines and trappers that are using it and uh, out shooting at uh, winter game. Uh, it's a real stealth operation, it's quiet, it keeps you above the snow and you can glide along. Um, so we're finding all sorts of different people that are finding applications for the Marquette Backcountry Skis. On the Marquette Backcountry Ski, it's really interesting because for the cost of a whole ski package is about less than a season pass uh, to a ski resort. So you really can get about a lifetime experience off of that single investment. So if you just want to keep them in the trunk of your car, and uh, all of a sudden you drive by a place that says, hey, that looks like a good place to go skiing, uh, climb up, ski down, and, uh, and that's all the fun you need to have. It's not like you need to go out and make sure that you're getting your whole day filled up because you've made the expense of heading out to a ski resort. 
The way that you use it as far as your boots and bindings are concerned is uh, the rule of thumb is the more boot you have, the more of a skiing experience it is. So uh, the way that I like to ski them is with a 75 millimeter three pin style binding. Some people say, oh, like the old time cross country ski bindings. Yep, so like the old type cross country ski bindings with a plastic or a beefy leather uh, Telemark style boot, that gives you the most control when you're skiing. Um, now, other people, they like to use uh, some of the newer style NNN style, so if you already have the NNN style, which is the, the horizontal toe bar on the front of the boots, you can mount those bindings to this ski. Um, and then we've got this ice boot binding that's coming out as well, and pretty soon you'll be able to actually add a snowboard binding uh, to that device, and you'll be able to put any old boot on the Marquette Backcountry Ski. So you can put your Sorrells or your pack boots or your mucklucks on there and um, you'll lose some of the skiing performance, but it makes it a real simple thing to pull out of the trunk of your car and disappear into the woods for a while. If you want to sharpen up the edges, you can take an actual old wood hand plane and run it up the edge, and that'll sharpen up the edges. And if you're worried about the little scratches on the ski, I don't really worry about them, but if you are, you can actually run it over with a blowtorch. So I think any kind of product that you can develop that can be uh, adjusted and fixed and uh, upkept with a blowtorch is one that you need to have in your garage. We designed them, invented them up here in Marquette, uh, and we blow mold them down in a factory that actually makes snowmobile skis. They're made out of uh, polyurethane, fiberglass, and a little bit of silicone to make them glide, and then some brass inserts. And it's a zero waste manufacturing. So uh, all of the waste ends up getting cut up and recycled and put back into the original mixture. And so the ski is made and there's no waste. And uh, so it's a fairly environmentally friendly way of making a product. There's a ton of different places that you can buy the Marquette Backcountry Ski. Um, there's the local shops, Downwind Sports, Switchback. You can try before you buy. Gives you an opportunity to make sure it's something that you really want to uh, get involved with. Um, but also, we have a ton of retailers uh, who are calling us and saying, hey, we've got people that are interested in this ski. Can we sell those? So um, they're really available worldwide. So again, it's this little product coming out of Marquette, Michigan, uh, that's finding its place all over the, all over the planet. And what's neat about it is they're stamped with Marquette Backcountry on there. So it really brings, you know, a little bit of a sense of home uh, for us here in Marquette in the UP and spreads it all across the world. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Monday night right here on Upper Michigan's very own Discovering.